Well, today is the feast of the workmen, of the workmen, Opificis, Saint Joseph, otherwise known as the feast of Sancte Joseph Opificis, by which we can look at the word Opifex. Opifex is a craftsman, a workman, an artisan. Now the Latin word for a work is opus. And so one who loves God by his many opera could be called an opifex. So you're probably familiar with the sort of a musical spectacle called an opera. In an opera, we have various little musical works that make up an opera. But an opera is plural, whereas opus is singular. So it's just a, a reference for the word. So this is one of the church's official titles for St. Joseph, Opifex, meaning a craftsman. And depending on the translation in your, in your hand missile or your prayer book, uh, it may list it as craftsman or workman or worker. Now, this word worker needs qualification because there are some today who will attempt to say that St. Joseph work represents the worker movement in a socialist sense, whereas the whole purpose of this title and this feast is to identify St. Joseph as our patron in the fight against communism, against atheistic communism. Now, Opifex refers to one who makes something, an artisan. An artisan creates through his work. And in this way, an artisan imitates God. God creates. And we could say that God alone creates. And man co-creates. So God creates everything out of nothing, whereas man must create out of matter which already exists. Man cannot create out of nothing. Man is not God. But neither is man a beast. There is a difference between work that is characteristically human and work that belongs to animals. Now, when we consider the dignity of work, then, we are considering that which is characteristically human. There is a Jewish philosopher from the last century by the name of Hannah Arendt, and Hannah Arendt writes that every European language, ancient and modern, contains two etymologically unrelated words for what we have come to think of as the same activity. And these words in English are labor and work. Labor is different from work. After all, labor can be done by animals, whereas work can only be done by human beings. Now, labor provides for the necessities of life. Life itself depends upon labor. But by contrast, work is done for its own sake. Work requires the use of reason, for which it belongs to homo sapiens, wise man. Now, labor can be done by animals, and the Greeks considered that what men share with all other forms of animal life was not to be considered human. So in that, we understand that we share with plants in that we have vegetative souls, we grow. So be, having a vegetative soul is not specifically human because we share that with plants and animals. And then we have, we have sensitive souls, but so do animals. The plants don't have sensitive souls. Animals have sensitive souls and human beings have sensitive souls. We have the use of our senses. So we couldn't say that having a sensitive soul is characteristically human, but Having a, a rational soul is considered characteristically human and angelic, except angels cannot do manual labor. Angels cannot do work. Well, they can do work analogously in another way. But men can do, including women, men and women, I mean that inclusively, what men share with other forms of life is not to be considered human. So labor is something that belongs to animals, although men do it, women do it. But work is characteristically human. Now this distinction helps us 
to clarify that which makes the Lord's day holy. We know that we're not supposed to work on Sundays. But here is the difference that is made between labor and work. One could say that labor is done for the sake of accomplishing something. Accomplishing something for man's subsistence or very existence. Therefore, the yield of labor is to be sacrificed, is to be refrained from on the Lord's day. But on the other hand, work which is done for its own sake can be engaged in on the Lord's day. But the principle is that we should avoid, we should endeavor, we should avoid accomplishing something through our work on the Lord's day. So therefore, we should engage in leisure on Sundays, which may include some sort of work, but work for its own sake. So we sacrifice getting something done. We sacrifice checking something off of our list. Now this takes us back to the very beginning. The Lord God created Adam from the clay of the earth, and he placed him in the garden of paradise to work and to guard the land as a custodian. So let's consider then, God created, created Adam in the wilderness, out there, and then he placed him in the Garden of Paradise. Now, Adam then, in the beginning, is given a very privileged work because it's God's work. Now, God is the true opifex, the true worker, or rather, God is the creator, of everything from nothing. And man is given to participate in God's work, crafting artifacts from those things that already exist. And in this way, we say that man is an artisan, but not a creator. Again, God alone is the creator, and man participates in God's creative work, but only by an analogy. So we say that man is creative. Man arranges those things already existing, and he crafts them into what we call artifacts. Now, an artifact is the result, then, of artistry, of craftsmanship, of man's work. Adam was given privileged work in the Garden of Paradise before the fall. And after the fall, he had to do his own work out in the wilderness. Let's consider that that work out in the wilderness can never be completed. We think about work in the garden and how pleasing that must have been. Helping out, helping God to tend to all of the, you know, beauty he had provided, all the goodness he had provided. Whereas there's frustration out in the wilderness. There are flat tires on carts and on wheelbarrows and and there are broken parts on engines. And there are those who get in our way when we're trying to get something done. And then there are thorns and thistles and all sorts of weeds which you can never completely get out of a garden. Especially, uh, especially calendula. Calendula looks great, but once it goes to seed, you can't get rid of it. It keeps coming back. I would imagine that in the Garden of Paradise, calendula kept to its place and let other things grow around it. But out in the wilderness, calendula just gets out of hand. And so many other weeds, so many other weeds, you just can't seem to get on top of it. It's frustrating. And I'm, getting, I'm going somewhere with this because our work as, as human beings can never be completed. There will always be more to do. And in the end, we need to accept the fact that we won't finish the work we began and somebody else is going to have to complete it for us because we will die. And it may be that our work is forgotten and that nobody completes it after us. And that can be very frustrating from a human point of view. But if it is merely our own work that we, per that we pursue, we will be left unsatisfied and will be become more desperate the closer we get to the grave. But if it's God's work we pursue, 
we will always be fulfilled because we don't need to finish it. It's God's work. We only need to continue it. God will finish the work when it pleases him to do so. And it is pleasing to assist God in his work. And it pleases him that we attempt to do so. Now we think about, <clears throat> we think about the frustration of trying to do our own work and never getting it done. And there is a story that I've heard several times that uh, blessed, or rather St. Teresa of Calcutta, Mother Teresa, you know, there's just an overwhelming number of poor people dying on the streets of Calcutta, India. And it was a temptation of her sisters to want to spend more time working with the poor, even at the expense of time in the chapel praying. And Mother Teresa reminded her sisters, well, if you go out there, then you're doing your own work, but you're not doing God's work. And so when any sister would complain about not getting enough done out on the streets, Mother Teresa would give her an extra hour in the front of the Blessed Sacrament. So she'd get less done out there on her own, but actually she would get more done because then it was God's work. God can do it without us, but he chooses to have us participate in his work. And we need to remember that. We need to remember that and not get desperate about so-called social justice. Social justice is often nothing to do with justice and everything to do about the egos of those who are doing it. We will not make the world a better place if we neglect the justice of God. God can get anything done just like that. If we are doing our own work, we will be frustrated and it will not be fruitful like it will be if we do God's work. And likewise, we need to value the work that is creative and not treat people merely as machines who need to be productive. When we speak about St. Joseph as being our patron against atheistic communism, communism values man for what he can get done, for being a productive citizen. Whereas a Catholic values man for being human being and having dignity apart from getting anything done. This is why we don't believe in assisted suicide. This is why we don't believe in euthanasia. That a life is valuable regardless of what a person accomplishes. And this brings up the whole question then of contemplative and active life as well. The value of contemplative life. Nobody sees a contemplative nun. What does she accomplish? Well, from a human perspective, we might think she accomplishes nothing and is therefore not very valuable. But from a Catholic point of view, a contemplative nun is getting a lot of work done. More probably than those who spin their wheels and work 60 hours a week. For what? A paycheck? Money? Fame? Power? Well, those nuns, they are richer without having any money and far more powerful, I would say, than those powerful men in the world who think that they can steer the events of, of the world by their power and their wealth. St. Joseph is a patron of craftsmen and he's also a patron of all those who do human, truly human work. Now let us think about that. Do we desire to have a machine replace a human? Or do we desire that humans would somehow take on qualities of a machine or a computer in order to be supposedly greater? That's a very scary thing. St. Joseph could just as well be our patron of what it is to be fully human, to be alive, to be humble, 
and to be great. Greatness sometimes is what, in what we don't accomplish and we allow God to accomplish. Let us pray for a preservation of all that is truly great, truly great in the eyes of God, this wonderful creation of humanity that he has given, and in our fallenness and humility, that he has raised us up to a dignity higher than the angels for those who are Christian, those who are baptized, those who are in a state of sanctifying grace. No machine can accomplish that. No animal can accomplish that. And a human being can only accomplish that by uniting him or herself with our Lord Jesus Christ, crucified, died, buried, risen again, infusing us with sanctifying grace, supernatural virtue, and divine life. And that should give us great hope for all in the face of all these troubles in the world, as you give us great hope. Let us persevere, and with the help of St. Joseph, let us commend ourselves to him, to his intercession, and let us have no fear for anything that might threaten us. Amen.